Welcome to the On My Workbench channel. In my last two videos I showed how I built a four-way data cable that I used to connect my EG4 batteries to a computer to display the battery data on the BMS tool software. In this video I will be showing how I built a four-way splitter box using off-the-shelf parts. Links will be in the description. I will only be talking about the EG4 LL lithium iron phosphate batteries with the built-in LCD display. This may not work with or may not be needed on other models of signature solar batteries. First, let me state that I'm not in any way affiliated with or sponsored by Lowe's, Marlin P. Jones, or Signature Solar. I buy from Lowe's because they are the only game in town. I have been buying from Marlin P. Jones for years and thought others would like them. And the only affiliation I have with Signature Solar is that I bought my batteries from them. All of my videos are 100% sponsored by me. And like most of the small content providers on YouTube, I have not yet reached the level of subscribers and views that YouTube requires to monetize a channel. Yet YouTube is placing commercials on non-monetized videos once the video passes 100 to 200 views. Yes, I know I don't have to upload videos to YouTube. But tell me, how would you like it if you went to work and were told that the company policy was they will not be paying any employee until that employee has worked 4,000 hours and have acquired 1,000 regular repeating customers in the past 12 months? Well, that's what YouTube does. To be monetized, a channel has to have 4,000 hours of annual viewing time and over 1,000 subscribers. We get nothing from the commercials that YouTube places on our non-monetized channels, but YouTube keeps 100% of the money that they charge for the commercials on our videos. YouTube, whatever happened to paying your fair share? Richard at Signature Solar, in a comment on one of his videos, stated that he would try and test one of their GrowWatt 8-port RS-45 can hubs to see if it could be used with the BMS tools in place of the data cable. To my knowledge, he has not done it yet. In my last video, I offered to test one of them if he did not have the time or manpower to conduct the test. All he has to do was contact me and let me know. I am still waiting. The parts I used to build the four-way splitter box is an electrical box from Lowe's or any other electrical supply source. I use the Sigma Electric Weatherproof Box Item 71209. It's $4.35 at Lowe's. A wall plate kit with Cat 5 jacks from Marlin P. Jones, stock number 33818 Tango Tango. It's $2.95. And one of the USB to four RS-485 bidirectional signal converters, also from Marlin P. Jones, stock number 35227CP, $2.95. All of these links will be in the description. To start with, you'll need about a 4 foot length of Cat5 cable without any connectors on it. You'll need to strip about a foot of the outer insulation from the cable. I singled out the brown and the brown white wires and cut the rest off even with the outer insulation as shown here. You'll also need four of the Cat5 connectors. Place the brown white wire into the slot of pin 7 of the connector. Connector color does not matter. The brown white wire should be across pin 7. Next, place the brown wire across pin 8 and press the wire retention clip onto the connector across pins 1, 2, 7, and 8. You have to press really hard to seat the retention clip on the connector. Confirm that the correct wires are in the correct pin slots and repeat for the remaining three connectors. I have found it's much easier to put the wire retention clips on the connectors before the connectors are inserted into the faceplate. Just remember to leave the wires long enough so that all the connectors can fit in the faceplate. I used one of the screw-in hole plugs that came with the electrical box to route the Cat5 cable through the end of the electrical box. I did this by drilling a small hole in the plug, then progressively increasing the hole size to fit the wire. I used two zip ties, one on the inside of the box and one on the outside, to secure the Cat5 cable. After putting the Cat5 cable through the box plug and securing it with zip ties, I slipped a short piece of heat shrink tubing over the end of the Cat5 cable and connected the USB to RS-485 adapter to the cable. The brown wire goes to the D-minus terminal and the brown white wire goes to the D-plus terminal. Before I shrank the heat shrink tubing, I tested the splitter box to confirm that it worked. As can be seen here, you can change from battery to battery just by changing the pack ID number and the BMS tools software.
please check back with the On My Workbench channel for more videos on cool stuff. Please subscribe, like, comment, share, and click the little bell. And thanks for watching the On My Workbench channel.